And I want to tell you, irregardless of what you might think, this message I'm sharing with you today could possibly be one of the most important messages that you ever hear. Because when Jesus offers us a new life, there's a lifestyle that goes along with it. Jesus is our healer. Third John 2 says, Beloved, I would above all else that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in every way and that your body may keep well even as I know your soul keeps well and prospers. Okay, can I tell you the truth? You can't have a sick soul and a healthy body. He says, I pray that you'll be as healthy physically as your soul is healthy. That's why we got to understand that every area of our life affects another. If I'm not spiritually healthy, it's going to affect other areas of my life. If I'm not physically healthy, it's going to affect other areas of my life. If I'm not mentally healthy, you know, you can worry yourself into disease. You know that? So it, it's all connected, and we can't ignore one whole section of our life and think that it doesn't matter. Can I tell you something? If you are out the body you're, you've got, there's no store in this city or any other city where you can go buy another one. And you know what? When it's gone, it's gone. And if you don't have a body, you can't stay here. And I'm personally not done yet. I'm planning to stay a while. So that means I got to take care of the house. You know, all I can do, I'd be like Dave this morning. You know, my part is to tell you, I know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I hope that some of you today, and not only people here, but people watching by TV, that, you know, I mean, I think about how many sick people there are. And how many people that just feel lousy all the time? And, you know, this is not the answer to all sickness. I mean, there's a lot of sickness and disease for a lot of reasons, and I don't pretend to have all the answer to everything. But I am saying that we need to do what we can about the part we can do something about. And how many of you believe today that some of the problems you have, you could do something about if you would? Thank you. Point well taken. And you know what? If you're already doing the, the right thing, congratulations. Be an example to other people. Don't try to shove things down their throat and make them do what you do, but be an example. You know, people ask me on a regular basis, how can you be so fit at your age? Well, I take care of myself. And I wasn't for a long time, but you know what God showed me? He said, if you don't start doing these things that I'm telling you to do, and one of them was working out, he said, you are not going to be strong for the last third of your journey. And I started working out regularly almost 10 years ago. And I'll tell you the honest truth. If I wouldn't have done it, I'm not sure that I'd be strong enough to be here today. Just that simple. And I was sore for two years. I mean, I started working out when I was 63. I was sore for two years. I mean, you haven't had any fun until you're so sore that you fall on the toilet and have to pray to be able to get off. Oh, my gosh. It's like... I mean, I, I couldn't get down. I finally just fell, and I thought, I don't know now what I'm going to do. I hope I can get up. I know I tell you guys some crazy stuff, but, you know, you just got to... You got to realize that I know that it's not fun, but I'm talking to you about your future. I'm talking about will you make an investment in your future? Don't just look at somebody else that's in great shape and say, well, I wish I looked like that. They didn't get it wishing. Ooh, this is better than we even think it is. He forgives all of our sins and heals all of our diseases. Let me ask you a question. Do we want miracles or do we want responsibility? Sounds like another tweet to me. 
I mean, seriously, do we, do we just want to get a miracle every time something goes wrong and expect God to come along in his mercy and overturn all of our wrong choices? Well, you know what? God's ought to keep doing that time after time after time because we don't learn anything if he does. You know, part of what I'm talking about this weekend is learning how to be obedient. And this is an area of obedience just like everything else. We can't say, well, you know, I know I should go to bed, but I know I'm not getting enough sleep, but I know I should work out, but I know I shouldn't eat this, but. So what you're really saying is I know this is wrong, but I'm hoping I can do it and not have any problems from it. Come on. This is just your spiritual mama trying to help you. Now, oh, where do I want to go now? Just go somewhere, I guess. Do you need a fresh coat of paint or an entire program to rebuild and repair? Can I tell you something? It's never too late to start again. And I'll tell you the truth, no matter how bad you might feel right now, and you, you, may, you may be able to just quickly jot down 10 different areas of your body that give you problems. How many of you could probably do that if I said start writing? <laughs> Woo, man, so many. Merciful day. And you know what? A lot of times when we start trying to correct things, our body kicks up a fit and we think, well, I can't do that. You know, you, you should see me some days when I try to do squats. My knees go, I ain't doing that. It's like, I, I mean, you haven't had any fun until you put a barbell on your back. And, and honestly, some days I think, I can't, you know. And then I think, yes, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Now, you can't do things that are going to hurt you. But if you got somebody good working with you, then you won't get hurt. And you know, you don't, you don't have to pay a trainer if you want to work out. I don't care if you don't want to do anything but walk a couple miles a day. Get out, do something, move. Move. You got to move. Maybe you could just start by cleaning your house, I don't know, or cleaning out the garage, or going, picking up the trash out of the yard. I mean, not everybody has to get on some kind of a fancy program. You know, the thing is, it's not that you can't have anything. I believe we can do all things if we do them in moderation. It's the excess in our life that's a problem. You can lose some sleep one night or a couple of nights here and there. You can work really hard a certain period in your life when you're trying to build something, but we can't just keep doing the wrong thing over and over and over and over and think that we're going to get by with it. So I'm asking you again, are you an investor or a gambler? I would love to see some people that really feel great right now start investing I'd like to see you start investing in your health for the future. Amen. Don't wait till you're falling apart to do it like I did. Do it now. 1 Corinthians 6, 12. Everything is permissible, allowable, and lawful for me, the Apostle Paul said. But not all things are helpful, good for me to do, expedient and profitable when considered with other things. Everything is lawful for me, but I will not, and I underlined I will not, become the slave of anything or be brought under its power. So what's Paul saying? You know what? You can eat a dozen cookies twice a day and still go to heaven. <laughs> Hello. You don't have to exercise to go to heaven. You don't have to drink water to go to heaven. You don't even have to sleep to go to heaven. You can be all stressed out and go to heaven. But it's not the best way to live. It's not the way to enjoy the life that Jesus died to give you, and it's not a great way to be a good example to other people. I can do anything I want to, but I will not become the slave of anything. So for any born-again, spirit-filled Christian to say, if I eat one cookie, I gotta eat the whole bag, if I eat one potato chip, I got to eat the whole bag. 
There's something wrong with that. We have the fruit of self-control. I can eat a cookie and not eat the rest. I can eat some, I can eat none. Food is not my God. Amen? All right, let's see what else I can make you happy with. <laughs> let's look at Aphrodite's. I think we need to see this. Philippians 2, 25. Telling you is not good enough. Looking is good. You know, this is the way your mama would like to talk to you, I think. Yeah, you're thinking, well, not mine. Well... <laughs> Philippians 2, 25 through 30. However, I thought it necessary to send Aphrodite back to you. He's been my brother and companion <clears throat> in labor and my fellow soldier, as well as having come as your special messenger, apostle, and minister to minister to my need. But he's been homesick, longing for you all, and has been distressed because you heard that he was ill. And he certainly was ill too, almost to death. But God had compassion on him, and not only on him, but also on me, lest I should have sorrow over him coming upon sorrow. So I have sent them him the more willingly and eagerly that you may be gladdened at seeing him again, and that I may be less disquieted. Now watch this. Welcome him home then in the Lord with all joy and honor, and highly appreciate men like him, for it was through working for Christ that he came so near to death risking his very life to complete the deficiencies in your service to me, which distance prevented you yourselves from rendering. So it's kind of interesting that he's saying, listen, you need to honor this guy. He's worked so hard, but he worked so hard, they almost killed himself. However, the thing that I find interesting is if he was working that hard for Christ, then why didn't God protect him and keep him from getting sick? Because you cannot break God's laws, even in the name of God, and get by with it. And neither can I. And I want to tell you the truth. When I started this ministry back in 19, well, whatever it was, I was, I mean, I've been teaching the Word for 38 years, but five years I taught home Bible studies, and five years I worked at another church. But I worked really hard at that church. And then we've been in our own ministry now, like 28 years, something like that. And the work it took and the, the stress I had because I didn't know what I'm telling you today. And I said yes to way too many things and there were things I could have said no to and still got done what I needed to get done. Can I tell you something? One of the only ways you're ever gonna relieve some of the stress in your life is to learn how to say no when you know in your heart that you need to say no. How many of you have a hard time saying no? That many? How many of you have a false sense of responsibility? You feel like you got to fix everything that's out there to be fixed. Well, see, I got all that too. I mean, because of being abused in my childhood and trying to keep what my dad was doing to me away from my mother, I took the responsibility of everything, keeping peace in the house, keeping her happy, keep, you know, and so I still have to deal with that all the time. I have to say out loud to myself, it is none of your business. It is not your responsibility. Stay out of it. Sometimes having a good talk with yourself is helpful. Amen? Now, when I said, how many of you have a hard time saying no, there was a good 50, 60% of the people in here that lifted up their hand. So how can we follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit who's going to lead us into life with a capital L if we have a difficult time saying no to people when the Holy Spirit's telling us to say no to people? And why do we have a difficult time? We care too much what they think. We don't want them to be upset with us. We want everybody to like us. We want everybody to think we're great people. Well, you know, that can be like, well, you know, I just have a generous heart and I just want to help people. And you know, that's good. That can even be a gift that God's given you. But even a gift taken too far beyond the leadership of the Holy Spirit can still get you in trouble. I know people that have a gift of mercy. And I'm telling you what, if they're not careful, they can't correct anybody. Because everything is like, oh, I need you. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm getting tired too. Stick with me. <laughs> it's 
start taking care of yourself. So I made myself sick working for Jesus, running to the doctor all the time, getting mad at the doctor because he told me I was stressed out. I didn't, I'm not stressed out. <laughs> you know what I want him to do? Give me something, now here it is, give me something so I can keep living the way I'm living and it not be a problem. Uh-oh, that's good. Give me a pill to swallow so I can live like a crazy person. <laughs> Do we want to talk about social media? <laughs> you know, I didn't even know until about six weeks ago what a selfie was. I'm like, what? Oh yeah, there's 450 million of these selfie pictures that are uploaded every day. 450 million, and it's just getting started. I thought, I've spent the last 40 years trying to die to self. <laughs> and now the generation we live in, they spend all day taking pictures of themselves. <laughs> You know, that, that's a lot of time. I mean, that could stress me out if I had to take a picture of myself every few minutes and put it online. I, you know, I'm having fun with you, but you know. I mean, you know, it aggravates me when I'm preaching to people and they're out there. <laughs> Rude with a capital R. <laughs> Amen. I don't like it when I'm having lunch with somebody and the whole time I'm trying to talk to them, they go. <laughs> and hey, I, I'm for new technology. I love all the technology we've got today, but you can't let it control you. You don't have to check your email when you go to the bathroom at two o'clock in the morning. You know, there were times in your life when you weren't that important. And I'm not sure any of us are that important now. That somebody has to be able to find us 24-7 or we get afraid. I mean, I know how I act when I leave my cell phone. I'm, God, I gotta go back and get the cell phone. Can't not help the cell phone. I mean, Dave will tell you, I get in my purse. It's like, oh, I forgot my cell phone. Then I find it somewhere. He's like, you got it somewhere in there. Dave, man, he answers his phone when he feels like it. You know, it's like, and I'll be like, answer your phone when I call you. Well, I had it on silent. I was hitting golf balls. And I'm like, well. <laughs> Remember, I told you I got a new Dave story, but I don't think it's going to fit in until tomorrow sometime. Too bad. If you want to hear the Dave story, you got to come back. Okay, now, let me talk about one final thing that causes a lot of stress. Remember, stress causes disease, and disease turns into disease. And there's a lot of things that cause stress. You know, not taking care of yourself causes stress, not sleeping causes stress, not eating right causes stress. There's all kinds of things. Worry causes stress. But just quickly, what does disobedience do to us? What, what, is, what does it do to you spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and then finally physically, because if all the rest of that's messed up, it's gonna get to your body. What does it do when I know full well that I'm doing something that God doesn't really want me to do or that I'm not doing something he does want me to do, which thankfully the longer you're in Christ, you get over that, but What does it do? Well, it gives me a guilty conscience. And there is nothing more stressful than having a guilty conscience. Walking around knowing that you're not doing what you should be doing and continuing to do it anyway. <laughs> the best favor that any one of us can do ourselves is to make a commitment today 
that by the grace and the mercy of God, we will be led by the Holy Spirit because he is given to us to lead us into the life, capital L, that Jesus died to give us. And if we follow his leadership, I'm gonna do a book on stress. That's gonna be one of my next big books coming up. But let me tell you something. I'll let you in on the secret ahead of time, although I do want you to buy the book. I'll let you in on the secret. The whole secret to living without stress is to follow the Holy Spirit. Now, I'll have to sneak up on it, but that's, I mean, that's it. You know why? Because Jesus said, I came that you might have life with a capital L. And since I'm going away, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, and he's going to live in you to guide you, to teach you, to convict you of sin, to convince you of righteousness. And if you'll follow his leadership, wow, life with a capital L. Energy. A sharp, creative mind. Calm emotions. Just follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. So if somebody says to you, hey, let's go do this. And you're like, mm. but then your emotions say, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go. <laughs> okay, let's just say that you made a commitment to, uh, whatever, I'll just make something up. Let's just say that I make a commitment to go see my 87-year-old aunt who I take care of at the nursing home on Monday. And I've told her I'm going to come, and she's all excited, and I'm going to bring her some lunch, and she's all excited. And so then a friend of mine calls and says, hey, listen, Ooh, there's a big sale out at the mall. Let's go and have lunch. Now, I know without even having to pray about it that I need to keep my word to my aunt, but, oh, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go. <laughs> So I make up some silly excuse to my aunt that really turns out to be a Christian lie. <laughs> Come on. And so I don't keep my word and I go shopping and I spend money I shouldn't be spending and I eat food I shouldn't be eating and the whole time I'm feeling rotten <clears throat> inside because I know that I didn't do what I should have done. So now then I go home and I keep feeling bad all day. Then I don't sleep good that night. And then I'm all bummed out the next day, feeling a little depressed and tired. So then I go to the doctor. I'm depressed. Can you give me something to cheer me up? <laughs> Come on, is anybody with me? Well, this is an encouragement to make sure that you take care of your physical body. It's actually the house that you live in, and it's the vessel that God wants to work through. And the truth is, is if you wear out the one you've got early, you can't just go somewhere and buy another one. So I believe that one of the real secrets to feeling good physically is to be an investor and not a gambler. What I mean by that is invest in your health instead of doing a lot of wrong things, gambling that you won't have any bad results.